Mike, I imagine down the years people have asked you what it feels like to be one of the most accomplished players in program history, asked you about other players in program history, similar to you. Trace passes you on the all-time scoring list today. What will you tell people about Trace once all of this is said and done? Well, I mean, you know, as a player myself, I was never about accolades, man. It's just something I was blessed to be able to do in scoring the basketball. And the beauty about Trace and Mike Woodson, we both didn't shoot threes. He, he, he doesn't shoot them, and I never had the three-point line. But I couldn't be more proud of a young man uh, than Trace today. Um, that record is – I've been sitting in that spot for a long time, and – for him to surpass it, man, it's, it's special. It just means the body of work that he's put in, you know, over the years. And but he can't stop there, man. I, you know, it's it's just points, man. You got he's he's still staring at two things: a Big Ten title and a national title, man. And that's where I'm trying to get him. Yeah, yeah, coach. So you guys are down. I think it's 48-39 with a little more than 12 to play. You climb back, and then that last minute and a half or so. Why were guys like Jalen Fino and Miller Cop able to make such key plays to get you guys that win? Well, I mean, we're we're hungry too. You know, I mean, this was a separation game. If they win, they separate. And you know, even though we got a long way to go, still, we this game was important. And you know, you got to applaud Illinois and 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 how they played. They they were without their best player, and they were trying to move up too. And they and they played that way, and but we made the plays coming down the home stretch. I thought that we needed to make in terms of getting stops and Jalen's two big free throws, the jump shot that he made, and then getting it out of that double team uh, right at the end there. Mike, uh, you won a whole lot of 50-50 balls, especially in the last four or five minutes of that game too, with just uh, the effort and uh, intensity that kind of went into everything on the defensive end had as much to do with scoring the points, didn't it? Well, it had a lot to do with it. I thought the first half, they, they, we were getting beat on the boards. They won all the 50-50 balls. I mean, we were just moving in slow motion, I thought. And uh, it was heated in the locker room at halftime a little bit. But, you know, I thought we came out and, and they, they jumped right, on the, right from the start. I mean, and, and we just kept scrapping and scraping and, and we made a game out of that at the end and was able to do what we needed to do to win. Mike, can you uh, talk about how you, what your approach is with Jalen in terms of, you know, just keeping the faith? Because he didn't, he didn't have a great statistical game. He made some mistakes, but then he's on the floor at the end of the game to make some big plays. Uh, what, what's your approach in terms of dealing with him on he, that? He's a freshman. And freshmen make mistakes, you know I mean? You know, I, I just look at his process, the process of where he's come from and the fact when you lose your starting point guard in Xavier Johnson and you turn the ball over to a freshman to run your ball club at a major program, that's huge. It's huge. And make no mistake about it, he's put us in this position along with the supporting cast with Trace Jackson Davis leading the way. You're not going to shoot it well all the time, but I always judge players at the end of the game about who they are as a player. And he made the plays down the stretch that counted. And that's what I look at. You know, if he had miscued those plays, then I'm in his ear after the game or tomorrow saying, hey, these are things that you got to learn the next time you're in that position. But he, he made every right play, you know, except for throwing the ball away out of the timeout. As a coach, that kind of tears you up, man, you know. But I thought he made winning plays coming down the stretch to help us win it. Coach, how have you seen Race, just since his injury, basically attack his recovery um, to, to, get back on, to get back on the court? How have you kind of just seen him deal with the, the mental and physical, you know, hurdles of that? No, I think he's, he's coming along smoothly. I think uh, I played him up at Northwestern 25. I think he got 22 minutes or so tonight. You know, so I got to just gauge that. A little bit. Um, somehow, I got to get, I got to get tomorrow and, and Geronimo. You know, Malik is playing at a good level. I got to get them back in the swing of things because, um, you know, we're gonna need guys like that as we continue this journey. We still got a long way to go, and you know, I just don't want to pile up. You know, 
Trace is playing a damn near f the whole game. And, you know, I think he played 30, what, seven tonight. So, you know, we got to, you know, start scaling him back if we can with Malik and Geronimo giving us some minutes, you know, up front. Coach, obviously Miller, tough night shooting uh, the other night at Northwestern. He bounces back. Was there any conversation with him after that? Obviously, I know it was an emotional game for him. And then I just, how, how happy are you as his coach to see him play like he did tonight after a tough game at Northwestern? Well, again, I mean, Miller's been around a long time, and that's that Northwestern scene is not a good scene for him. <laughs> Going back to last season, it's, hey, it's what it is, man. But the bottom line, he's played well here at home um, for us, and so I expect him to make shots here. You know, he's he's got the fan base, and he's got everybody in his corner, so it makes it a lot easier for him. Jim. Mike, you alluded to, to – uh, Jalen having the ball in his hands so much in the turnovers, but as a team with 14 turnovers that led to 16 points off of those turnovers. And then at the free throw line, uh, Illinois was 14 of 18, 78%. Indiana just 61% was 50 something percent for most of the game. How concerned are you about those things as this season starts to wind down? Well, again, uh, you know, we kind of been up and down in those areas in terms of the free throws. Uh, but for the most part, we've been better this year shooting free throws, especially when it counts. Um, you know, I mean, you're always concerned about that. I mean, you, you look at every statistical category on the, on the stat sheet, you know, you can go in and nitpick and say this and that. And, and in some games, it's just smooth selling and, and things are great. Um, but again, you know, stats are what they are. Sometimes, you know, I, I gauge things on what happens at the end of the game if it's a close game. You know, that's – and that's – you know, a lot of it's on me. I, yeah, I live my fantasies through these guys to see who's going to make plays. You know, I mean, that's what I get excited about. And tonight, Jalen made plays shooting ridiculous – a stupid number. It was crazy. But he still made plays down the stretch to help us win the game. Coach, Illinois made six of 12 three-pointers in the first half, missed all eight in the second half. What was that halftime adjustment for the three-point shooting, and how did three-point shooting affect the game on both sides of the ball? Again, I thought that they were the most aggressive team the first half, and we were just playing on our heels. You know, a ball was just floating around the perimeter easily. Guys was just freelancing, playing, you know, beating us off the drive. I mean, it was – it wasn't, pre it wasn't pretty basketball, you know, the first half, I didn't think. And I thought the second half, you know, especially as the game started to get tighter, our defense started to pick up and, you know, eliminated a lot of the threes and the good looks that they had the first half. Mike? Coach, you've been around a lot of young basketball players in your, your career. What is it about Jalen that allows him to throw a bad pass that they take for a dunk and then turn around, come I right, know. come right back, make a shot, make two free throws? Well, it was it wasn't it wasn't pretty what I said. <laughs> I mean, that's that's a coach's worst nightmare, man. You come out of the timeout and you throw the ball right to your opponent, and they go down. They didn't have to work for it, and. When he was coming back down, man, I was screaming at him like, and he took it upon himself to run a pick and roll and go make up for it and make the shot. And then he makes the two free throws, so go figure. Last question. Coach, specifically Matthew Mayer had 16 from the field in the first half and then only two from the field in the second. How much of the halftime adjustment was specifically keen in on him, and what did you see from your guys kind of shutting uh, him down? Miller got an ear full, you know, and guys that didn't switch up on him at halftime. Uh, you know, hell, I thought he was going to go for a career high here, the way he was playing. He was playing extremely well. But second half, we kind of closed in on him and, and took away a lot of the gaps where he was able to work on. All right, Coach, thank you. All right, guys.